Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Zoom is the voice of the Cougar, Cougars, Greg Rebel. Greg, nice to have you back on the program. Happy Tuesday. How are you? Good to be back with you. Happy Tuesday to you guys. Let's go. Can All we right. can we talk about Professor Rubel right now? So yeah, you actually yeah. teach a class <laughs> and have given uh, finals or a project. Is your class hard? Uh, well, whether it's hard or not, I guess depends on the student you talk to. But uh, we had great students this semester, and they all got really good grades. Uh, the semester has ended. I still have to post grades at uh, at some point, but uh, the hard work is done. Yeah. I feel like we should wish you congratulations you like on surviving bow? the semester of this COVID year. Incredible stuff. You like wear a bow tie when you teach or anything like that? Yeah, horn rim, horn rim glasses. Uh, <laughs> and the students, they, they place an apple on the desk every yep. week. It's, uh, yeah, that's how we roll. That's good. All right, Professor, uh, we've been discussing this Super League movement in the world powers of soccer and how a 12-team conference is – being formed, they're going to invite three others, and then there will be some other teams to get invited to a tournament. Is the college football edition of that, if we were to push that to NCAA football, a good idea for something like that? Would, would that benefit the game, and if would it include a team like BYU if there was some upheaval like that? Yeah, I, I think it might benefit BYU, uh, which would be the only reason I'd like to see it happen. Uh, and really, you're not talking so much about like a Super League breakaway as more of a geographical football league of college institutions, um, you know, a much larger number of teams than the smaller group we're talking about in Europe. And I think, you know, that that might be a little more, um, you know, acceptable or, or justifiable or reasonable than I think what's happening in Europe right now. Because, you know, ultimately what we want in sports is we want the meritocracy, right? We want, we want results on the field to equate to success in other places or, or, or results in the arena, the venue to, to, to equate to success. And when you're just automatically granting, um, you know, and, and you could argue that's what the P5 is, is an automatic granting of inclusion. But, you know, there, there's still competition between P5s and non-P5s. There's still an entry point for non-P5s to get the big bucks. There are some qualifiers there, so it's not quite as extreme as what they're talking about in Europe. But but let me uh, quote uh, Pep Guardiola, and when he talks about why he doesn't like the Super League idea, he says, sport is not a sport when the relationship between effort and reward does not exist. It is not a sport if success is guaranteed or if it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. And, and I think as in America, we, we, we grasp onto that a little more tightly than what I think is being proposed right now in Europe. And we, we, we just kind of want that, that idea of meritocracy to still exist to an extent in our culture. Yeah, Pep Guardiola, the Manchester City uh, manager there, nice. So when we talk about BYU in this world, liking it to ourselves, we were discussing, Greg, is it more likely for BYU to get in with the big boys, Power Five, or if there was something new, if it went that direction, under the yeah. current construct, or would it have to be blown up for BYU to have a better chance? Yeah, I, I think the latter. I, I think it would kind of require a redrawing. And you kind of outlined some of the areas, Jerem, already that have proven problematic for BYU in past P5 flirt, uh, flirtations. I think you would almost need a separate entity, uh, a withdrawal to an extent from the NCAA, and, and it basically, it's a, it's a football league of, of collegiate institutions. And it feels more geographical. It feels more NFL-ish. NFL and it feels more sport-centric. It's a sport decision, not an institutional, philosophical, crossing all sports uh, decision. It's a football call. If you're making a football call in America today, you call BYU. You just do. Yeah. Um, if, you're having to, if you're having to address the myriad other issues that come with, you know, uh, P5 inclusion from presidents and board of regents to philosophies and virtues and values, it's a much muddier situation. If you're talking about who's going to fill seats and attract eyeballs in a football conference, a grand, larger football conference, you know, in this nation, you, you, I think you look to, team, to teams like BYU. Heck yeah. And uh, when, when you think about who would be at the uh, forefront of the power of this, I don't even think it's the NCA, and I agree with you. I think it's ESPN. But would ESPN, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, stiff arm the NCAA in that regard? Because they do have a relationship in not just football, but a lot of sports, obviously. 
to where it, it feels like if this happened, that ESPN would be at the forefront of it and want the, the rights to this. So I wonder, and again, we're just postulating based on what's going on in Europe, but we're also postulating on how BYU can get involved yes. with the big boys. So how, how would, yeah, how would that even happen as we just think out loud? Well, yeah, and it's not totally pie in the sky. I, I think a lot of people have, have, have been public about the fact that there might be one more seismic shift still to come in college football. Beyond the past, you know, conference affiliation changes we had, there was the thought that, and, and what's happening with the NCAA lately, um, you know, it, it's pushing, feels like it's pushing more that direction that it could require a separation, um, you know, for, for, uh, for the football playing powers to kind of get what they want in this thing. And so I don't think it's crazy talk to think about some kind of redrawing and some kind of true organizational schism that, that you know, allows the NCAA to still maintain control where it feels it needs it and yet allow some leeway and some freedom to these football playing, you know, bodies to, 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 you know, to make an organization. I mean, the NCAA is primarily when it comes to funding, it's a basketball situation, right? You know, the, the, the basketball tournaments fund pretty much everything else under the umbrella and, and football's already been kind of separate, you know, with yeah. the, with, with, with the football, you know, you know, bowl association already kind of running the postseason, we're you know we're halfway there already. You know, it wouldn't be too much of a break. It would be a break. There's no doubt, but the you can already kind of see the hints at, at organizationally how this might work. Fun to speculate for sure, and uh, interesting conversation. Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now for something that we feel like we have a more uh, well a better grasp on, and that is BYU football and their place putting uh, hopefully four, five, six players into the NFL in 2021. When you look at Zach Wilson and Brady Christensen, Greg, those guys are for sure. Maybe Kyrus Tong after that, but then there's a lot of uh, juggling in the air for teams fifth, sixth, seventh round. How many BYU football players do you expect to be taken in the 2021 NFL draft? Well, I, I guess I'd say I expect three and hope for more, right? Um, because I think those big three are, are kind of givens right now. Uh, with uh, with Zach and Brady and Kyrus, and after that, you know, because you know, once you get into sixth, seventh round projections, um, you know, you could as easily be a free agent as you could be a late sixth rounder. You know, depending on 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 who's really interested in you. Uh, maybe four is a more realistic uh, possibility. Thinking that one of those, you know, three other guys are a sixth or seventh round call for sure, then you might say, well, then you're good for four. But I think I think three are you know, locks, if you want to call them locks, and then everything else you kind of cross fingers on. You know, BYU's had such a good, um, you know, tradition, and you could maybe say that teams have come to expect BYU to place good free agents in the league, that they sometimes feel that, well, if we don't get them here, we'll get them with a phone call when the draft ends. Um, and then it becomes a game of chicken to see if, you know, the guy that you think you're going to get with the phone call is on enough radars in the sixth or seventh round, and how badly do you really want that guy uh, at that stage? To men's hoops, Atiki Ali Atiki is signed and official with BYU. Uh, he provides a little bit of uh, depth in, in the uh, front court there for BYU. Still waiting to hear about Alex Barcelo and Matt Harms and, and uh, potentially three open other scholarships. So it sounds like there's a lot of work to do. Um, Joe Lenardi comes out and says second team out in the tourney, which is fun <laughs> because we don't even know what roster BYU is going to have. But uh, what do you yeah. think of what's ahead of BYU in the offseason here in hoops? Well, I'm excited to see what Coach Pope and, and the staff have uh, in, in the pipeline. It seems like uh, you know they're they're they, they they construct things differently than 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 it used to be here at BYU. Um, there, there's a lot of you know short notice, uh, flurry of activity type decisions, but we've seen how that can still result in a really solid and cohesive roster group. You know, within a few months, and even after a COVID year, in which you didn't have a typical off season to truly refine and reform those relationships. BYU showed how it could, you know, kind of reform the team from one year to the next and end up in, in a similar spot. And so we've already kind of seen, you know, the MO and how it works and, re and the results you get from it. So um, even if it gets late and you don't quite know who's there yet, I think there's every reason to trust that uh, Coach Pope and his staff are going to come up with a good group that can, uh, you know, contend for that NCAA tournament spot. Whether or not you can contend for a WCC championship, uh, you know, depends on if, uh, you know, Gonzaga stops looking like Kentucky here uh, all of a sudden <laughs> and getting everybody they want. And that's really been the big shift here, right? The, the one constant you had with Gonzaga was the coaching. The coaching was always there. You know they were going to get coached up really well and that the coaches would scour 
for some of the best unknown players out there, whether that's under the radar stateside guys or foreign guys or the transfer market. But Gonzaga's made the shift from the under radar, uh, transfer heavy or foreign inclusion to now getting the guys they want out of high school. Yeah. The five, the five stars and the blue chippers. That's the big shift, right? Gonzaga is now like any other national powerhouse in attracting the players they want. They can go get kind of whoever they want right now. And that's the big change. And BYU's in a league with that team. And and they don't so much care about the players they're getting. So they don't care about gym sizes and 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 Ken Palm ranks in the bottom half of the league because they know that in non-conference, they're going to crisscross the country, play every big name and every big stage. And then they're going to play a few challenging games in league. And it's going to result in something close to a one seed <laughs> and a one and, and a one and done NBA situation if you're that good. You can get everything you want in Spokane, Washington right now, and that's the pitch that Gonzaga has been able to, you know, to throw out there. Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation. You're rocking that baseball gear. You got the Sailor Cook baseball jersey hanging behind you. The Batcats, I joked earlier, they, they need a hug, but that might be serious. That They're coming off a really rough weekend. It's been, uh, for the most part, a down season. So is there still hope for BYU baseball this season, Greg? If so, where – can we find it? Where can the fans find hope that there is still something better out there? Well, we just mentioned Spokane. You can find it in Spokane this weekend. BYU plays Gonzaga in a three-game set. Now, the Cougs are only two games back of the league-leading Zags in the loss column. Now, they're five back in the win column because the Zags have played three more games. But BYU gets a chance to, you know, get back into the race, if you will. And it has to happen this weekend. The league-leading Zags, they get three games in Spokane. And again, you could you could jump, make a pretty big jump in the loss column with a successful weekend. And the week last week started okay, right? That 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 win over Utah was encouraging. Disappointing what happened in Omaha. You know, it's one run games again. It's just it's moments. It's these handful of moments in games that are letting BYU down. And and yet we've seen you know on various occasions um, the ability for this team to string good at bats and strong innings and good support together. But uh, you know you're not seeing maybe enough support. Uh, and enough clean play for a lot of strong performances on the mound, and just it's just, it's a few clutch at bats that have just been going way uh, you know uh, by the wayside right now. But to me, again, if you're going to go back to the original question, this weekend is the weekend when things could really flip around. Big chance in Spokane. You almost need to sweep it right uh, to get back where you want to be. But there's that chance. Yeah, that's coming up tonight uh, from Miller Park BYU baseball. So uh, women's soccer. Oh, by the way, yeah, sorry. We, we should, yeah, Dixie State first. So today's game is Dixie State. Yep. At, uh, at 4 p.m. Yep. Yeah, big Gonzaga on the weekend. Just promoting yeah. TV and radio, baby. Uh, and then yep. you have women's soccer, 12 seed. That felt like a good number. Typically in the NCAA tournament, we, we're kind of jaded on what happens with BYU teams, but uh, that felt like a good number. That fe- felt like a fair seed. Yeah, it, it felt like a, 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 a respectful approach from the committee for what BYU was able to do here in the spring season. Now, you know, presuming Virginia is going to get past uh, SIU Edwardsville. You know, Virginia is that uh, is that that tournament pedigree team that was a little bit out of sight, out of mind this spring. They did all the they they, they did the bulk of their playing in the fall, uh, but they ended up with ten wins when you combine fall and spring. They only played four games in the spring, and they only played two games over like the last six or seven weeks because of a bunch of cancellations. And so, people are not maybe not quite sure what to make of Virginia, but that's a a perennial you know national power. Uh, this will be their thirty third NCAA tournament appearance. They were third in the ACC. That's a that's a tough second round draw for BYU. <laughs> it you know feels a little bit like you know BYU basketball. They got UCLA right in the second round. Tournament pedigree team, a team that had already played a game. Virginia will have already played a game. So there's some similarities there um, in, in terms of what you get in the second round. It's quite a reward for the season BYU's had to draw someone like UVA. But uh, you know this, this is a legit BYU team in every way and worthy of a seed and, and in a good spot earning that first round buy. I just can't believe you've disrespected SIUE like that, Greg. <laughs> I, I thought we'd have a matchup of the Cougars, but uh, you've written them off at this point. No, nah, it, it, it's not quite the write-off, but uh, <laughs> but we have to call, we have to say Virginia's favored to advance. Yes, it's true, but totally fair. Southern Illinois yeah. <laughs> University Edwardsville, n- never count them out, right? We've always said that. Hey, Greg, thanks for the time. Great to catch up with you. And uh, you can listen to Greg tonight on BYU Radio, the Cougars, uh, BYU Cougars Zap at 6 Eastern, 4 Mountain Time. We'll talk again soon, my friend. And they can watch you 
on the BYU TV app, right? That is correct. And you, in theory, you okay. can do both. You can do, you can have a million you can, devices on. You can, you can switch us back want, and right? forth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, hey, I'll see it. I'll see at the ballpark later on. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Greg Rubel on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. No